Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I broadcast out of the UK into your homes. If it's the first time you're passing by, um, I'm born in the UK. I've been vlogging for just under two years. Um, I was born in London and I moved out of London when I went to live in America. And I lived in America for just over 11 years. I spent one year um, in Africa and I've been back in the UK since 2000. And I run a magazine called Black Bright News and um, I also um, run a magazine. I also DJ at the end of the month. I'm also an author. I've written four books, um, which you can see below the names. And yeah, and I'm a poet. And I'm a visual artist, so I do a lot of stuff. I kind of dabble in a lot of stuff. Um, but more recently, I'm focusing on these videos because I think they're helpful. They don't only, I hope, help you, but they help me to grow because I have to research and I learn a lot of stuff. And I learn stuff that I wouldn't normally know anything about. And then when I learn it, I share it with my subscribers. So that's where I am. Tonight, I thought I would ask my subscribers who go to church how they how they feel now church isn't on if they go to church. Um, I was just wondering what you do with your Sundays now, because for a lot of people, particularly black people, church is normally where they go on Sunday, especially the older black people. They go to church on Sunday and it's like their second home. Some of them are there from about nine o'clock until way in the afternoon. They have their dinner there. They have after the service, they have a room at the back and they eat and they drink and they talk. It's an opportunity for them on Sunday to devote their time to God. They get dressed up, a lot of them. They get their hair done. They get their nose done their nose, their nails done, and they look the business. So church is like an event for them, like how the younger people will go to a dance, the older people will go to church. That is their social gathering. So what do they do now? Church is not on anymore. I mean, I heard Trump talking about he's going to miss Easter Sunday. And he was talking about, he wondered if he could just, just for that one, make an exception and have a like a social distance church outside the church, just so that they could participate in the service. But he was advised against it. And I can imagine that with Easter Sunday coming up, which is normally a really special Sunday, a lot of people are going to kind of feel a bit deflated that they cannot all get together and worship Christ on this very special occasion, which is when he redeemed us from all our sins. It's the day, you know, he was placed on the cross and, you know, forgave everybody and everybody from that day on was able to have a new life if they accepted him as their Lord and Saviour. But on this Sunday, well, Sunday the 10th, yes, this Sunday, they won't be able to do that. So what are they going to do in its stead? Are they going to go to, um, are they going to watch it on TBN? Are they going to be watching T.G. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Joyce Mayer? The thing is, is that when you watch um, the service from your, from your seats or from your living room or from your bedroom or wherever you watch it, it's not the same. Because a lot of people, when they go to church, they're kind of looking at people's hand to see whether or not they're married or some of the single people are checking out people to see whether or not they're single. And there's a lot of dynamics going on. I'm not saying that they all do that, but by and large, you find a lot of dynamics going on in the church. It's not just about going to the church and worshipping the, the Lord. For some people, it's the only occasion they get to dress up. It's the only occasion they get to mix with other people. And so it's really an important event. And so much so, two pastors, they actually died in Wolverhampton. They held a convention, I think it was two weeks ago, just before this big outbreak in the UK. 
and both of them died from the coronavirus. They contracted it from the convention. So you can understand, you know, their need for to be together, to be um, acknowledged. A lot of people, they go to church just to be acknowledged. Yes, on the one hand, they go to worship God and redeem themselves and give their little testimony. But for the most part, it's the pastor that just preaches. You have the, the singers in the back, the, pa the pastor preaches, everybody just sits and listens. And then at the end, they get an opportunity sometimes to say a testimony or you get they get a chance to pray when they, they, they repent of their sins or whatever it is that they do during that moment of prayer. And so when they miss all of that and they decide, OK, we're going to go to this convention, you know, yes, we're not supposed to all go, but we are we, we are children of God. A lot of people, they have that attitude, you know, we're children of God. Nothing is going to happen to us. You know, God will protect us. We'll be fine. But God doesn't suffer fools gladly. If you've been warned that to go out is and be in close proximity to someone you can get this virus, why would you think you're exempt? It doesn't work that way. God likes obedience. And by going out and, you know, sneaking around and going to these little churches, it's not the only church that, uh, that, um, that's been convening and disobeying the rules. And it's ironic that people who are supposed to be obedient and, you know, God-fearing, they are doing things like that, going to church or holding their little ceremonies. And if they're being socially distant, then fine. I mean, we could go back. When I, used, when I first went to the States, people held their churches in their basements. There was only about, maybe about, 10 people. It wasn't very big, but, you know, they'd set out the chairs and, you know, the pastor was there. Sometimes there might just be seven people, but that's how they started. And then more and, pe more, and more people would come and then, you know, it got larger and larger until they started saying, oh, we want to move into a building and stuff like that. All I'm saying is that if you've got a family and you... um and you want to hold a church service, I mean, okay, you're not qualified pastors, but I'm sure you all know the word of God if you've been going to church for so long. Maybe it's just an opportunity for each one of you to do a little testimony, to give thanks for the whole week, to give thanks that you're still alive to see another day. And if it's just your family, you know, it could still be a meaningful event. But if the reason for you going to church is externally motivated, i.e. you want to, somebody to see what the new dress you have on, or you want somebody to compliment you on your hair, or you want somebody to um, see how much you're putting in, um, for, in for tithes, and it's just a show kind of thing, then yeah, being at home and holding a service or watching um, one of these TBN programmes or these Sundays of praise or whatever they're called that's not going to serve you that's not going to satisfy you so you have to kind of this is an opportunity to question why do I go to church what am I going to miss about church what is important I mean some people I've heard so many women say I'm going to meet my husband in church men I'm going to meet my wife in church. Some people go to church for that primary goal. Just looking and them get married quick, you know. Once, they, once one finds somebody who's single and another one is single, boof, two twos, you hear they're married. So sometimes that is the function of the church, to bring two people together. It doesn't matter where, how long they've been in the church or whatever in some cases. Some churches are a bit more rigid than others, but by and large, they want to meet somebody who knows God and who's God-fearing. So that's why they go to church. So it is quite a shame because these two bishops, they died 24 hours apart, healthy as anything before they went to that convention. 
um, Bishop Theophilus Augustus Macalla and Bishop Horatio Fearon. That's two Fearons that I know that have died for the coronavirus. But both had underlying health conditions. And one of them, I mean, admittedly, he was 86. I don't know how old the second one was. And they appear to have caught it since attending the conference, which I believe was just before the official lockdown. But I think two weeks ago, we were still kind of being warned about, you know, these events. But some people, they think, oh, well, you know, I've, I've booked the conference hall, I've put all this money in it, you know. And like I said, some people think they're protected because they're children of God. And, you know, it's not all always the way. You, you've got Skype these days. You've got Microsoft Teams. You've got programs like Zoom. And maybe that's the way forward if you do want to bring other people together outside your family. But you really have to think about your safety and the safety of others. I believe over, over 70 people um, have um, our coronavirus, have the coronavirus in um, in Wolverhampton at the moment. So they were both prominent figures in the Church of God of Prophecy. They moved to UK from Jamaica. Um, Macalla had raised millions through fundraising for social justice, social action, educational projects in England, America, Jamaica, and Africa. And as of, yeah, as of, it was 92 actually, not 70, as of Saturday just gone, 92 confirmed died in Wolverhampton. Oh, I didn't realise they died, I thought it was just cases. So 92 people confirmed dead in, in um, Wolverhampton. And they said they're testing positive for COVID-19. You know what I'm wondering, though? And they're talking about um, testing positive for COVID-19. I thought they didn't have the test. How are they testing them? Because as far as I knew, the tests, there's not enough tests or the tests aren't here yet or we can't, the tests are only going to be for certain people. So is that just a phrase that they're using when they're saying they're testing positive for COVID ID, because I've been hearing that word testing positive, testing positive time and time again. And I'm thinking, how are they tested? Anyway, all I'm saying, though, is um, so on a Sunday, you won't be able to dress up in your in your brand new frock. And you guys won't be able to put on your nice new suit and your brand new shoes and go to the barber and look sweet. Because you have to stay in your yard. But anyway, your main focus should be the one and only God Almighty. So don't detract from the central purpose of what church is all about. And that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.